All right, what's up everybody? This is Ingram. I'm one of the Minecrafters and today we're going to actually talk about an extremely important um it's not so much a single block machine as it is a combination of blocks that together make what I'm calling a machine and it's probably one of the most important machines that you're going to make for two main reasons in my mind. One is that it gives you an epic buttload of free stuff, like free Nether stars. If that doesn't entice you, then stop right there. The second important reason is because in order to make any of the AE2 um, chips in the Age of Engineering mod pack, you're going to need um, these things called chips from the calculator mod. And so the three different rigs that we're going to look at today are rigs that you can make kind of at different stages in your life of Age of Engineering. The one directly behind me is something that you can actually start making at age two when you first break into the calculator mod. Um, there's one piece of it that we're going to look at that's actually part of age four, but you don't need that in order to build what we're looking at. Um, and then farther beyond that, there's one that you can make at age eight or nine. And then the final one is like when you're baller mode and you just want 10,000 circuits all at once, run that one. So we're going to need to learn about ah, three blocks to start, really two. I'm only going to focus on two. Um, there's this thing here called the extraction chamber. And what you do is you put stuff in it. So dirt or cobble goes in there. And then depending on what you put in, you either get a dirty circuit out if you put a piece of dirt in, or you get a damaged circuit if you put a piece of cobble in. Damaged circuits go into the um, reassembly chamber, and the dirty circuits go into something called the restore chamber. Um, and at the end of that, it's going to process it. It's going to spit out this little unanalyzed chip and when you throw that puppy in the analyzing chamber that's when you start getting free stuff so you can do this manually but since we're not gluttons for punishment well actually we kind of are but since we don't like to do things manually well we kind of do okay so we're gonna build a machine that just does it all for you it'll do it automated this is showing like kind of a cross-section right here is kind of a cross-section um, you can stack this machine as many times as you want. And the best part about this version, I'm going to show you how to build a better one in a second. The best part about this version is I think you can build it in age two or age one. You can build it very, very early on. So if you're just starting out age of engineering, build this thing right away. All of the technology here is actually um, accessible very early on. The other one that I'll show you is for age, I think, eight. It's much later, much, much later. All right, so it's a little bit hard to see what's going on here, but let me walk you through it. The first block we're going to start off with is that beautifully graphic glitched uh, tier three cobblestone generator. That's something you should be able to make, again, fairly early on, age two. Um, that thing is going to generate cobblestone, and then there's an item uh, transfer node pulling cobblestone out of that and dumping it into the top of each of these extraction chambers. The extraction chambers need power, so there's um, one of those uh, first energy cables, it's called, on the outside and that's providing power uh, to each of the extraction chambers those are pulling the circuits out of the cobblestone and then dumping it into the bottom um, there's a hopper and those hoppers are all aimed in towards each other and they all go towards the front and into this graded hopper now the reason we need this is because these extraction chambers put out um, small stone and it tends to clog up the work so we have a special uh, compact drawer that's taking all the small stone. Underneath that is another hopper that's aimed the other way that pulls everything that is not small stone, pulls it out, and dumps it into this small storage crate. The small storage crate just acts as a buffer because I don't want anything to limit how much free stuff I get. Out of the bottom of the small storage crate, we're going over and into the reassembly chamber. Now, we only have one reassembly chamber, and we have uh, five extraction chambers. The reason for that is because extraction chambers suck, and they really don't ever produce a circuit. So they tend to produce a buttload more small stone and a buttload less of the um, circuits that need repair. Anyway, those circuits that need repair are going to go into the reassembly chamber. They'll run. We've whacked the bottom of the reassembly chamber to turn it red so that it can uh, output. The hopper underneath that is going to pull all the processed, restored circuits out of the reassembly chamber and dump them again into another small storage crate. There's another hopper underneath that, and that is pumping directly into this analyzing thing. And the analyzing machine is awesome because it doesn't actually need power. And so what happens is when you put a circuit in the analyzing machine, it analyzes the type of circuit so that you can actually use it in all of your recipes. And if there's, I don't know, there's like somehow stuff hidden in a circuit. I don't know how you hide like an ender pickaxe in a circuit but so whenever you analyze these circuits stuff will come out of it and that's how you get all of the free stuff 
All right, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to the uh, kind of the end part here with the analyzing chamber. So the analyzing chamber has the input coming in from the hopper ducts on the, well, for us, it's the right side. On the left side of this block, we have a transfer node pulling out items. And the bottom, we actually whacked with the PA wrench. That's the thing that we're going to be using to, like, manipulate all the sides of these things. Whack the bottom of the PA wrench, put another hopper there, and put another one of these transfer node items. And what the... Um, what that's going to do is it's going to pull the, the top one is going to pull the circuit out and the bottom one is going to pull all of the stuff out. You need to get them both out or that analyzing chamber will clog up. You can't leave either one of them in there. So then we're going just into whoops, regular transfer pipe and then the transfer pipe is actually going into a drawer controller. Now, one thing to please notice is that the drawer controller is facing the transfer pipe. For some reason, the drawer controller won't accept input from the back. So just make sure it's facing the input pipe. And then the farthest piece of transfer pipe so it's the longest to get to and it's going to be the last thing that these go to um, is the storage crate now some of this stuff is close so that transfer pipe is actually physically next to the drawer above it and the hopper just whack it with a wrench to turn that off we only want the output to go to the small storage crate all right so i just need to make one clarification regarding this drawer controller because technically the drawer controller is available only in h4 if you look at the drawer controller it requires a basic circuit board and the basic circuit board requires a carpenter and in order to make the carpenter you actually need a sturdy casing which is the thing that um, triggers h4 however you can build this whole setup and run it in fact in order to get the drawer controller you're actually going to have to have a setup like this built um, and either set the output using transfer pipes into just the back of these kind of like make a little a little network of all these pipes running up and down the backs of the drawer control, uh, the basic drawers, storage drawers, or you can just do um, r everything right into a small or medium storage crate. I think you can make small storage crates. I don't remember when you can start making medium, um, but you can just go back into the back of one or more um, small storage crates until you get to age four and then can actually do the drawer controller. Then on the front, um, this mod actually gives you a different block to store all these things in but i found that it kind of sucks um i don't really like it it doesn't really work it glitched out some of the numbers went negative on me i don't even know what that means so this is what we typically do i use like a four by four or a two by two um storage drawer now the trick with these is that there are different types and if you'll notice really really close there's one that's glowing and there's one that's not glowing and so there's four different colors two of the colors have two extra and um, you need to watch out because the glowy and the non-glowy are actually different ones and different recipes need different ones. So um, the other thing is that chips do not stack. So if you have five chips in your inventory, it's going to take up five inventory slots, which means when you're coming to the drawers, you actually have to put stack upgrades in order to store a decent amount in here. So throw a bunch of stack upgrades in there. These darker storage things I have on the side, this, again, outputs circuits and a whole bunch of other crap. So... Um, if you look in the dark storage things on the side, you can see that I got an energy cell down there. I put in, um, you know, a golden pickaxe, golden axe, go uh, there's like swords, there's ender axes, there's bombs. Anything that doesn't stack, I threw in there. It also produces a buttload of the calculators. So if you're using those, um, sometimes there's subcomponents. You can see the calculator assembly is there. Uh, it can kind of be expensive to make early on. So you get them for free in this machine. And then the real cream of the crap right up here, the small storage crate. This is where we get all this. Look, look at this thing. It already made, it made a nether star. Like you have to kill wither bosses to get those. All right, so once you finally get to like age eight or whatever, you can put this thing, you can build this thing called a precision chamber. Now the precision chamber is much cooler because it actually accepts a ton of different things. You can actually precisely choose which chip. So a clay block into the precision chamber produces one chip. Dirt, um, cobble produce random. But you can do any, like dirt and cobble will produce random chips. And then there's a whole, I think there's like three pages of, of eight recipes each that can actually produce specific chips. So for every chip that you need, you can actually put something specific in and get just that chip out. Those can all go into a thing called the processing chamber. Again, the analyzing chamber needs no power. We're going to use the same thing. And this is the thing when you can build uh, the other two white blocks here, you can also build this thing called the storage chamber. Um, this is the thing that actually lets you store specific types of chips in it, but I don't know, it just never really worked for us and it was never a good option. By the time you can build this, you can also build um, ME, so there's really no sense building a storage chamber. Uh, and the fabrication chamber is something that we'll use. You can actually build stuff. These are all the things that are required, and if you put it on top of a storage chamber, it will make the recipe, like if you hit fabricate, it'll actually pull 
the chips out from underneath the storage chamber um, and, and fabricate whatever the heck you're, you're trying to do. All right, so this is a much more advanced machine. You can't build the subcomponents for this until I think age eight in the Age of Engineering mod pack. So um, this is going to be something you're going to have to wait a little while to get, but we're going to use those um, precision extraction and the, the processing chambers. And it's the same basic design. We're going to have over here, let me just whoops, switch back to this. We have our precision chambers, um, and they're just accepting. Let's If we drop these down, I'm going to show you how to build this. Um, <clears throat> we have a tier five cobblestone generator and just whatever you're using for power. And we're just running those up the back. So we're going to put um, item conduit into the back. And this is going to be set to insert. And that's going to dump the cobble in. It should start mm, pretty quick. Whenever this thing, the cobblestone generators don't generate automatically. Okay, there we go. I mean, they do automatically. They don't generate every, uh, every second. So then we're just going to add... Um, conduit for the power so now these have power and they have the cobblestone and then on this side we're going to take the PA wrench and whack these so that they turn uh, red that means they're set for output then take the item conduit again and we're going to set these to extract always active and then the, um, the precision extraction chambers are going to take the cobblestone they're going to produce a chip every single time, and they have the, the chance to produce that um, small stone byproduct. So we're going to extract both out of the one facing. They're going to come down this stack here and into this um, trash can. And the trash can, the conduit is set to um, with an advanced item filter, and the reason for that is we can put it in what's called sticky mode. And so I just have soil and small stone. Those are the two outputs. Um, that are possible. We're not going to be putting dirt into this system, so you don't actually need that. You really only need the small stone. But by putting it, I just crank the priority to 10. You don't need to do that. But really what you do need is to make sure that sticky mode is enabled. And what that's going to do is any small stone that comes to this system is going to go into this um, output. And basically any small stone byproducts are going to get dumped straight into the trash can. Um, both of these two stacks then come down into another basically buffer chest. I just use a skystone chest because it's cool. Um, and you can see our chips kind of coming in here. Now, <clears throat> these are all damaged. And so we're going to pull out from the other side, which is also set to always extract. And that is going to feed our um, processing chamber stacks. And these have all just been configured to insert. And then on the other side, we're basically doing the same thing the processing chambers put those on top they get item conduits set these to insert and that puts the damaged circuits inside these processing chambers there's already one there and then same thing we gotta take the PA wrench turn these to output item conduit set to whoops extract always and then just give them power. I ran the power up the front here. You don't actually have to do that. And then both of these stacks are identical and they just come into the side. So they're set to insert into the side of an analyzing chamber. Now this analyzing chamber is actually um, configured. We have to configure two sides of it at once. So the bottom I have um, and the reason for that is because there's green. So the circuits come in here and as they get analyzed, see there's their output. Um, but as the circuits come in and get analyzed, there's, you see this one's green and then the output is red. Same as on the other machine. So the green is gonna come out the bottom here. Oops, out the bottom here. And then the, let me just fly over in here. The red, take the PA wrench and whack that facing with the red. Um, gosh. You're going to need to get a uh, wrench. Take your wrench and disable these. Just click it a couple times till they go away. There you go. Um, and only because of how tight um, this whole setup is. You don't have to do it this tight, but we like to have everything compact. So this is going to set extract always. 
it'll pull all of the output from the chip and then the chip itself is going to get pulled out the bottom and both of those are just getting dumped into the insert mode into an ME interface and what that does is it dumps the output and all the chips into our ME system now this ME interface is also configured to um, output damaged circuits and dirty circuits and the reason for that is because these when you're analyzing a chip it has the opportunity to actually create another chip for free um, and those are always those two types it's always a damaged or dirty circuit of this exact type so we can see them actually in our ME system here's 31 of these and 30 of the other kind so if you just put them in here um, this will act as a chest and then this piece of ender conduit is set to extract and oops it's got to be always active and what that's going to do is it's going to start taking some of these damaged and dirty circuits out of the um, ME system and pumping them back into the processing chamber and because it's these advanced processing chambers you can actually do dirty and damaged in the same one you don't have to um, you don't have to split it out so those are going to get reprocessed reanalyzed and we'll get the output from those too so then this is just a super super simple ME system I have my controller on the bottom a um, piece of cabling coming out to the ME interface uh, the ME controller and then going into an ME drive and we just have two ME drives in here one of them is partitioned and one of them is not and the reason we do that is because um, if you partition an ME drive you can actually make it so that only the circuits will go in the ME drive and um, the applied energistics mod will like prioritize that storage drive so that all of the chips because they don't stack they can clutter up the works they can actually burn through the available types um, so we partitioned all the circuits to go on one storage cell everything else can go on the other storage cell and what you're left with um, is a is a drive I don't want to yank it out but if I yank this drive out it would pull all of the cells out the other reason that that's important is because you can create a system where um, if you have like a couple of these drives partitioned you can like grab all of your circuits and walk over to main, maybe your major crafting area and, and tie it into something like your, um, your fabrication chamber. All right, next we're gonna talk about upgrades that these machines can get so that we can actually build this compact Uber beast. All right, there are four different upgrades that we can put into each of the analyzing chamber, processing chamber, and precision chamber. Um, all four of them go into all the machines with the exception of the void upgrade does not have any use in a processing chamber. Um, the processing chamber won't actually allow it. So we have transfer, void, speed, and energy. Transfer allows for the chamber to do automatic output. So the um, machines like the precision chamber and the processing chamber accept an input automatically, but they don't output automatically until you put a transfer in them, um, a transfer upgrade. Remember, you have to whack um, your designated output facing with the PA wrench until it turns red and then the transfer allows that to automatically eject. In the analyzing chamber you still need two outputs but it will only allow you to have one transfer upgrade and that kinda sucks. What it'll do is it'll allow you to automatically output the, um, the uh, whatever comes out of the chip after you analyze it but you still need to pull the chip out manually so I don't know, it kind of sucks. Not really that useful in an analyzing chamber. Um, you don't need to add it um, for the rig that we're going to show you. Uh, the void is very important. In a precision chamber, the void upgrade will automatically delete scraps. So you don't need to, an extra setup for the, um, the small stone or the small dirt. In an analyzing chamber, it actually eliminates all the, the riffraff stuff that you would be extracting from chips. So it's probably good to have it in both if you want everything take it out of the analyzing chamber. Speed and energy kind of go hand in hand. Speed will allow the machine to run faster and faster, but it seems to be that you kind of want to keep the two of them in sync because if you max out speed, the machine will shut down because it can't get enough energy fast enough. So energy upgrades, um, I think, allow for better efficiency, but they allow also for more input. <coughs> and in general, you want to keep the two of them neck and neck because if you get too fast, you won't be getting enough energy. And if you get too much energy, I think energy you can have, but it doesn't do you any good because um, you, you max out how fast you can run. So do speed and energy together at the same time. So to actually put these in, I'm going to show you how to put a transfer uh, upgrade in. Transfer upgrades, any of these upgrades, they all go in the same way. You just get it in your hot little hand, 
and just right click and you'll see down in the bottom it says transfer equals one energy void speed are all zero so if I grab a speed upgrade um, let me just grab I was gonna grab let me just grab a bunch of them here speed upgrade you have to keep clicking to add more than one so if I grab a whole stack here you can see each time I click speed is going up now to get them out of the machine you um, open the machine itself and then there's this little eject button that removes the circuits and unfortunately when you hit this it removes all of them all at once so use that uh, with caution alright so this big beast of a machine is actually fully modular you can stack them as many times as you want just keep repeating the same pattern um, it's actually very very fast I had to turn it off in order to uh, to make this video because it was making my computer so laggy that's how fast it runs but I'm gonna show you how to build it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add another um, component on here I'm not gonna go into how to do AE networking um, and we've seen all of the other components of this I'm just gonna show you how I'm stacking them together um, this actually has a design flaw where I put them too close together they need to be s at least two apart uh, and the reason for that is because the energy cables um, the energy cable of the energy ender energy conduit maxes out at 2000 f or 20,480 RF per tick and unfortunately one of these um, 3 by 5 walls actually maxes that out so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go like one two three that's far enough away and we're gonna put some of these um, item conduits down we're gonna grab a cobblestone generator put it there again make this set to extract and then we're gonna take precision chamber on the bottom you can invert this stack it doesn't matter grab your wrench whack the tops of all of these then grab your processing chamber and put that on top of each of those again whack the output facing then your analyzing chamber and the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna actually whack um, that top in this design and turn that red and then take more of our item conduit that's gonna go on top and then we're gonna configure these to be oops sorry extract always active and you're gonna do that all the way down the line and then at the end of the row just put a chest um, and I have it there I have it staggered so that two tops can share one chest that is definitely fast enough you do not need any more than that and so we'll have those go into a chest make sure that this is configured to insert and then we're gonna put some power up the back and we're gonna make sure our cobblestone is going in the bottom so we set all of these uh, to insert all the way down the line And then we're going to need some, um, I'll put a power module under the bottom here and grab, where's the energy conduit? Go on the back side here, it's faster. And give all of our machines energy conduit and connect them. And so now all of our machines are powered and actually they have cobblestone already in them. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our upgrades. So I'm going to do um, speed, transfer, and void. Speed, energy, sorry, speed, energy, transfer, and void. Okay, so all of our precision chambers are going to get void so that they don't make that small stone and I'm going to put it also on the analyzing chambers and then I'm not going to actually add all these because it's going to take forever but if you do speed we'll get this up to 16 and oops transfer make sure that's in there and energy so now you can see that the precision chamber should have all of them all maxed out the processing chamber same thing we're going to max out speed we're going to max out energy and we're going to max out transfer which is only one and then in the analyzing chamber the only thing that it accepts are void and transfer and so now we have maxed that out as well so this machine rig here is going to is going to operate um, full speed and the problem that we actually have now is we also need to extract the circuits and so the way that i had that design is the circuits are extracted 
from the back and go onto this side. And the reason for that, let me get another chest, is because I wanted to keep the two separate. I wanted to keep this circuit separate from everything else. You do not have to do that. If you want to combine them into the same network, that's totally fine. And so what I'm doing here is I'm leaving this output facing green because that's the circuit color for the analyzing chamber. And I'm just, oh gosh, I'm setting these to extract, always active. There's probably an easier way to do this. I don't know that I've ever figured it out. And I screwed every single one of them up, okay. Then in the front, I have just two isolated ME networks. Very, very simple. It's just a controller, ME drive loaded with drives um, or loaded with uh, storage cells. And then I'm using two colors here. So the red color for me is signifying that I'm dealing with output. And I just have a import bus with some accelerator upgrades because this chest um, can fill up. This one doesn't necessarily need them. Those, the um, the byproduct of all of your chips, if you're using the void upgrade, is actually not very fast, which kind of stinks. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to put an import bus. This one we absolutely do need um, acceleration cards in. This generates chips very, very fast. So we'll get that, put some acceleration cards in there, and tie this into the separate green subnet. And so now what we have is a stack that is going to take um, uh, cobblestone in from the bottom. It'll automatically process it. It will void the small stone. It'll eject it, the circuit, the damaged circuit, in the processing chamber. The processing chamber is going to clean the circuit, fix the circuit, and automatically eject it into the analyzing chamber. And then the analyzing chamber is going to analyze the circuit, um, giving us an analyzed chip as well as any of the output that came from the chip. The output from the chip is going to go out the top and into the red network and the chip itself is going to go out the back over here and into the green network and if we turn this on which <coughs> there they <laughs> and we immediately start to lag so this machine um, with just two bays has been running I don't know for maybe five or ten minutes and I already have 500 of this one chip so all of the chips I mean, it's, look at how fast they're going in there. Look at how fast these, these chests are filling with chips. Extremely, extremely friggin' fast. This other side, not so much. There's a lot less in here. We already have um, eight diamonds and whatever. Nether stars, ender pearls, ender hose, um, algorithm separators, advanced assemblies. And these are the, the cool things. Again, in only five minutes, I've generated a calculator locator and um, two calculator plugs. So very, very fast, much faster than any of the other two rigs and at this stage um, really what you're doing is you're getting a buttload of chips for all of your AE stuff um, if you get to the point where you have too many chips I just recommend setting up a system that automatically um, uses like level limiters and everything to keep a certain amount of chips in the, the ME crafting maybe 10,000 of each type and then just dump everything else and keep this one running all the time um, because there's a lot of good stuff that comes in here and this is definitely the, um, the if you look at the chip to output ratio um, there's going to be so many chips that this network is going to clog way before the red network. So um, set up some limiting, dump all the um, extra circuits out of this one, and just make sure that this one's running all the time if you um, want the free, all that free jujubes. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Once again, I am Ingram, one of the Minecrafters. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave comments in the video below. Maybe show us some love or join us on our Discord channel. We are live pretty much all the time. Thanks for watching and stay poised.